Greetings, fellow captains, space truckers, pirates, and the like. I'm Wizard, and welcome to my very first ship build guide. This is the Basilisk, and it was my first scratch built ship in Starfield. Uh, I started with the Razor Leaf, and the, the reason I did that is for the uh, unique encounters that you. Uh, receive when you come up against pirates and spacers uh, and ecliptic. This is a class C ship, full mobility. I've optimized the mass such that I can still have full mobility. And I'll go over the stats later in the video as well as a full interior walkthrough and a combat run through every planet in the Serpentis system. Stick around to the end for that. It's the most exciting part of the video, and hopefully you can stand listening to me talk you through some of the decisions that I made throughout the video. I'm going to try to keep it to a minimum. I do want to uh, go over some of the decisions that I made and why, and hopefully that can help you in your future builds and potentially uh, inspire you for things that you would like to build. Welcome. Thank you for being here, and we'll get into this ship momentarily. The bridge that I chose to use for the ship is called the Cabot, and it's made by Nova Galactic. Now, if you didn't already know, to get the special Nova Galactic parts, such as the bridge that I'm about to show you, as well as any of the 2x2 two two or 2x3 two parts, you need to go to Titan, which is a moon of Saturn in the Sol system, and you need to land at New Homestead. The ship tech there has all the Nova Galactic unique parts. Um, I don't believe they're available anywhere else, just like Deimos uh, and the other manufacturers. They have one specific location for anything other than the one by hab units and the typical cockpits and bridges. So find your cockpits and go down and find the Cabot bridges. Now there's three variants just like the other ones. Um, effectively all they give you is uh, 20 more units of storage cargo space and they increase the mass slightly with each one and personally I started with the C3 um, due to the lower cost and the lower weight I didn't know how heavy this thing was going to be when I started so I decided to start with this now if you've got extra mass left over once you finish the rest of your build feel free to go back and put on the C4 bridge if you want. You will not notice any visual differences. They're completely the same visually. Uh, you're only going to get that little bit of extra cargo space. So totally up to you here. Throw that baby on there and the next place we need to go is to the Deimos Star Yard. This is where you're going to get the two HAB units that I chose to use on the build. The rest are from a different manufacturer once you get here, you're going to want to talk to this guy. You deserve the best of the... Of course. The main reason I went here is to show you where you can get the Deimos specific parts. Um, I believe you can get all of the 1x1, 1x2, and 1x3 HAB units uh, at any other star yard that has Deimos parts available. So I'm just going to move some things out of the way, flip this bay around because so I want this thing on the front and that is the bay that we're going to use it's a Teo Bay the shipbed 200 I think it's called um, so anywhere you can find a, a Teo ship tech that you know has Teo parts you can find that landing bay there so I'm just gonna take this one by one this is gonna control where your ladder goes within the ship which was another goal of this build, was to have one unified ladder for the main decks of the ship. So we're going to start with the storeroom, and if you didn't know, you can select these components and flip between 
the different variants of the HAB uh, when you have it selected. I like the engine be engineering bay B from Deimos and that is going to go right behind the storeroom and the storeroom will be connected to the landing bay. So put that there or however it works for you to begin with uh, just as long as you can fly this monstrosity away while you're finding your different components. I'm going to put this living quarters back on here so we can attach the bridge and we'll be on to our next location. From the Deimos Star Yard, we're going to go to the Narian system. And this is where the Stroud Eklund Star Yard is located. There's also a Stroud Eklund showroom on Neon. Uh, either of those will have Stroud Eklund specific parts. This one is close and easy to get to. Now, one issue you may encounter, which I did here, is that Havershaw, which is the guy you got to talk to, uh, doesn't always spawn right away. So he either spawns in at the desk behind the glass or at that one there. And if he's not at either of those locations, no big deal. I found that if you just wait for an hour, he will nice, show up. But compared to a trident? So we're going to do just that. We're going to have a seat, wait for an hour, and see if he spawns in. I heard they're making a new class of ship Check here. desks. And there he is. So talk to Havershaw. And this is where we're going to get into the brunt of our build. Most of the Habs that I used were Stroud Eklund. I like their exterior Absolutely. shape and their interior shape. The main difference between Deimos and Stroud is that the Deimos Habs will have uh, black floors. Get rid of all this stuff. We're not using any of it. The only thing we're going to keep here is that shield cargo, the 3x1 and 1x1 Deimos, those landing gear modules here. We're going to use a bunch of those. Get rid of the engines. And we're, of course, going to use this bridge. So get those out of the way so we can start laying out the main parts of our ship here. I'm going to move these out of the way for now. Uh, but they are going to reattach basically back in the same place, and we're going to duplicate them a bunch of times. So here's our one by one storeroom, our shipbed 200 landing bay, our Cabot bridge, and the engineering bay. And this is what we're going to start with. So take yourself on over to the HABs tab of your of your menu. First thing I want to do is set up the ladder. So get your Stroud companion ways and stack these up twice. Our main ladder is going to be within those one by one units. As long as you lay out the rest of your HABs the right way, that's where your ladder is going to be. First thing we're going to grab is our well really I should be grabbing the 2x2 two two battle stations now and I realize this in just a second so put this one behind that's gonna be your first living quarters 2x2 two two battle stations in front of the ladder and our bridge is gonna attach to that I like the bigger HABs they give the ship more open feel I'm gonna throw a computer core next to the battle stations and we're gonna put our bridge up against those so now we're going to duplicate this because you can duplicate and then flip through the different variants I like having my captain's quarters up here so we're going to put that down there and duplicate this again move it behind the ladder and that's going to be our workshop easy access from the captain's quarters now we still want to have, we're going to take this 2x2 two two because we want to have some more of those big open spaces. I like the way the brig looks. It doesn't really function as a brig in the game. Uh, it really just gives you more passenger spaces on your ship. We're going to copy, we copied that brig and 
and did the 2x2 two two living quarters on the other side. Another all-in-one. I like the all-in-ones because they have a little kitchen, they have four beds, um, and then an infirmary off of the brig. So that's going to go here. And that's really your HAB set up. Those are your modules. I decided to put an armory up top, and it's the only unit that isn't uh, directly accessed by the main ladder. But to me, I feel like that makes sense. I think the armory should be kind of hard to find within your ship. Uh, just, you know, role playing, you would want your armory to be kind of secure and away from the entry points on the ship. So, just as an overview, I'm going to fly around this a little bit, but we're going to take our landing gear and start putting it in there. I stuck those a little too far forward first, but I'm going to take these and start duplicating them. We're going to have eight of those landing modules on the center fuselage, and we're going to have two out on the outside underneath of the outer engines put that on just so we can leave here when we're done at Stroud and here I am realizing I put those too far forward let's move these back and move this back and we just need to fill up the spaces in between I'll go ahead and duplicate those one by one this is where our ladder is going to be it will give you access to all the habs you'll have one long main corridor all the way down the length of your interior it'll be very easy to navigate you won't get lost and it will be somewhat sensible this is all up on top by itself but again for me I think it makes sense if I could have pushed it forward I would have um, but you'll see the end result is pretty successful, at least in my opinion. Deimos Engineering Bay and Storeroom on the bottom. And the Teo Landing Bay at the front. Now let's copy those landing gear. As I said before, we're going to have eight in the center and two on the outriggers on the far outsides, and that is actually the bare minimum for uh, this ship when it's complete. If you have any less than this amount of landing gear, you'll get an error and you won't be able to fly the ship. So 10 of those landing units are the bare minimum. And this is the base for the ship. We're going to start with the fuel tank. It goes at the beginning of our stack of primary functional components. The grav drive will attach to the fuel tank and the reactor will attach to the grav drive. I went with the 900T. It's got the highest capacity of any of them. Um, and for a single fuel tank, maximizes space and gives you pretty much the maximum jump distance that you need. Find our grab drive with the J52 Gamma. I like the way it looks, I like its stats. And the grab drives, as you know, you don't need to power fully. They really only need one bar of power. And then for the reactor again, the Pinch 8Z from Zhang. I like the way it looks, the stats are great. I think it's got the highest repair rate of any reactor out there, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and that's that. You can see our ship is approaching 40 meters fore and aft. 80 meters is the maximum for a vanilla ship. And that was another part of my goal for this build was to m maximize the size of the ship. And this is all vanilla. I'm not using any glitches. You can see from all of the footage, I'm using the in-game snapping mechanisms and uh, not exploiting any of that stuff. So 
now we're putting our shield on. At first I went with the Warden uh, shield with 1125 capacity. It only needs 10 power to be fully powered, fully functional, uh, but you'll see later in the video I went with a slightly different shield and I'll explain why at that point. But for now we're going to add our docker and I'm realizing that uh, Stroud does not have the one that I want here so we're going to have to go pick that up back at Deimos again later on. I'm going to put the old one back on here for now so we can fly this ship out of here when we're ready. Uh, so this is just a placeholder for now. So we've got our shield, we've got our fuel tank, we've got our grav drive, we've got our reactor, we've got our landing gear, we've got our landing bay, we've got our docker, now we need our engines. I went with the Sal 6330 because as you can see they only have a max power requirement of two, meaning you can put six of these engines on your ship. They give you the most maneuvering thrust of any other engines and uh, they really allow this ship to be as nimble as it can at maximum weight. So we're going to put these six on here for now because Stroud is one of the few places you can get these engines. It's not the only place, uh, but since they're here, we're going to put these bad boys on. Now I'm going to put on my cargo units real quick because the last two engines will attach to those. I like these galleons to start with. They have great capacity. We're going to stick these on here for now. One and two. And we're going to attach our final two engines to those. Now you can see all of our errors are gone. We have everything we need to fly out of here and go to our next location. But before we leave, we're going to go ahead and apply some of these structural elements to this ship before we go. Uh, if you didn't know, if you build a landing pad with a shipbuilder at one of your outposts, they include all of these structural units from every manufacturer. So at this point, if you've got a landing pad at one of your outposts, go ahead and go there um, and you can put on all the structural elements at once. But we're going to start with these nose caps. They go on the front of the outside hab units. And we're going to start seeing the shape of this ship come together now. Put those there. We've still got some empty spaces in the middle, but we're going to fill those in as we go. I really love the Stroud nose caps. They have a nice uh, angled shape to them and really lend themselves to. Uh, giving your ship a great silhouette and profile. And we're going to put our final two cargo holds on here now. And I went with the 585 capacity polos, the Polo 2010s. Once you have everything else put on this ship, um, these will get you right up to the maximum mass you can achieve with these engines. And as you can see, we're already starting to approach our final mass rating. So, the Polo 2 Polo 2010s, they only attach on the top, so we need to add a couple of other modules to attach those. So leave those there for now. We're going to get some more structural elements from Stroud on here. The Stroud cowling three units long which I just went past but we can also get these units in here now the mid bracers now if you put a hab unit in that empty space there it will mess up the flow of the ship I tried it before it gives you side halls and not one long central corridor and it makes the layout kind of confusing so put on these Stroud cowlings here, and now you can attach those cargo bays that are hanging out in space. I'm also, while we're here, going to put on these Stroud caps. You're going to need one on 
each side of your central landing gear down here to finish those off and we can bring our cargo in underneath and you'll see why I put these in this location in a little bit uh, I end up putting a weapons mount on that Stroud mid bracer Just duplicated one of those Stroud nose caps, flipped it until it was the right way. Put these two here facing backwards. And then we're going to need two more of those caps to go at the front of our second engines. And one of the design elements that kind of wound up just becoming was the angle of those two caps opposed to each other. They end up looking like a, uh, an intake for the engines. We're going to close up some space on the top there and you'll see exactly what I mean when we get closer to our final shapes. Got to keep that docker for now. Again, it's just a placeholder. Put our rear cap up here. Most of the other structural elements that we need are from different manufacturers. We're going to be adding some Deimos wings and a couple of Teo uh, braking engines to the bottom part of our outriggers out there for our outside engines. Now while we're here, we're going to grab a couple of the weapons that we need. Uh, at, on this save, I hadn't done the first mission for the UC, but um, you need to do that to get the Vanguard Obliterator Auto Projectors. They're Class A uh, particle auto particle beams, and they've actually got the highest DPS of any particle beam available in the game. PBO, I'm sorry, the second highest. These PBO 175s are the highest DPS. Uh, so we're going to grab four of those while we're here before we go. And uh, later in the video, I will show you the Vanguard auto projectors and one of the locations where you can find them. The next best are these Exterminator 95 MEV auto Hellion beams. So we're also going to grab three of these while we're here and I don't have a good place to put those so I'm gonna go ahead and add my horizon weapon mounts to these mid bracers that we put on just a few moments ago one and two and we are gonna use those in the final build but for now we're just gonna put these hellion beams on here duplicate the first one duplicate the second one attach it And as I said before, if you didn't know, all of these structural elements from any manufacturer in the game are available at your landing pad with a shipbuilder at one of your outposts if you've got one. So here I am still looking for the vanguards and realizing that I hadn't done that mission yet in this save. I also uh, changed my shield, the one that we chose in this clip, to a vanguard shield, which is only available after you do that first UC mission as well. So go to uh, Mast in New Atlantis on Jemison and get into the UC and do the first mission. Once that's complete, you'll know you've done it because they will give you a spacesuit. So now we're going to leave Narian, go back to Seoul, back to Deimos Star Yard.
to get our demo structural parts. And you can skip this if you are at one of your landing pads. The cool thing about these Deimos wings is they provide you with many weapon attachment points. I don't think uh, any other structural element is as good as the Deimos parts for giving you weapon attachments. We are going to replace, not replace, we're going to move these cargo units down and put a braking engine there in front of our uh, actual engine. Now I prefer the Stroud ones, but as a placeholder I put the Deimos one in there. Uh, we're also going to add this lower structural piece to kind of finalize the rear lines of the ship. These Deimos hole pieces are very nice. They give a nice shape uh, to complete the look of these engines, the top engines. And we're going to need a Nova piece to finish off the front of that element. So here's the braking engine. Now the reason I like the Stroud better is because it's a bit longer and fills a whole unit space instead of just half of one. It closes that space off better. But we'll use it as a placeholder for now. These Deimos bumpers are a good way to unify the shape of those outriggers to the HAB units and give you a better profile, better silhouette. And we're going to move on to the Deimos wings. I've got two of the long ones on the outside of each of the outriggers. Gives the ship a little bit more of a presence. Cleans it up a little bit, unifies the shape some more. Uh, just makes it look like it was designed as a ship instead of different components put together. We get those two there. And again, for the sake of uh, unifying the look, we're going to duplicate those and put them on the back of each of these engines. And now we're really starting to see the shape of this ship come together. I'll grab a couple of these short angled ones, put them on the top here. Again, helps with closing up the ship, making it look more complete. And then next we're going to do our spine pieces. And they also provide a very good amount of weapon attachment hard points. Gives you more options for mounting your weapons in different ways. Pay attention when you're putting your structural elements on because they all have a mass as well. It's not much, but the more of these things you need, the more you're adding mass. And later on in your builds, uh, if you realize you're slightly over maximum weight for maximum mobility, then you can try to optimize the amount of these structural elements that you have. Uh, so that way you can maximize your ship's mobility without losing any of the function functionality. So there's our spine pieces. Uh, we need to replace that dock or two, and I believe Deimos has the one we want. I'm going to move these weapons up here. The two outside ones are basically where they're going to need to go, but we're going to have a Nova piece up there when we're finished. That kind of ties everything together up on the top there. Gives it a little more unique look. This little space was a a nice little happy accident where I found I could put a couple weapons and make them look like they were uh, really a part of the ship's uh, integral design. Put those two down there, that is where they're going to go. Now let's change that docker. lowest profile one is this and if you didn't know you can flip it and put it right on the bottom and we're gonna put it under the one by one hab units such that it is at the very bottom of the ship right next to the entry point and you can go straight up the 
uh, primary central ladder inside of the ship. This will all make more sense when we get to the interior walkthrough. So we're done there. Well, we need to go back to New Homestead to get a few Nova Galactic specific structural elements. If you're at your landing pad, you can save a lot of time. First thing we're going to do is close off, finish off, sorry, the front in the top engines, the front of the top engines. Here and here. And then we need the Nova weapons mount. We're also going to use a couple of these radiator parts at the rear, the outside of the reactor, so it doesn't look so flat and unfinished back here. This is a nice element. I think it works well with the finish on the reactor um, and gives you that nice upward angle. Just finishes it off. Of course, you can use whichever piece you like, but I prefer that one myself. Now we're going to do the weapons mount from Nova. We put this guy up here. I need to move that spine out of the way because it's got the two weapons attached to it. Take this, attach it to the front of your armory hab unit or whatever you've chosen. Put two of your exterminators on the outside of the Nova weapon mount. And then you can move your Deimos spine right back here. It fits in very nicely in my opinion. I'm going to flip this around so that the weapon is buried back in there a little bit more. And this really gives you a more streamlined look. You can fit Class C weapons up there. They stick out a little bit more, but like I said before, they have um, less DPS than these weapons do. Now, I was just calling attention to the fact that we don't have our Teo braking engines at the front of our lower engines yet, so that's where we're going to go next. And the best place to go for Teo parts is in Neon, in their showroom. There are other locations to get Teo parts, one of which is the Red Mile. Uh, but we're going to go here to Neon real quick and grab those braking engines. Go to the neon core, it'll spawn you inside, save you a little bit of time. I'm going to show you where the showroom is and who to talk to real quick before we grab our parts. I have something for you. You need to run to the end. That has a very dark crimson look. I would have loved to hang around with this kid. Now I realize how dangerous this area here. Run back to this elevator select the Teo Astroneering floor. When you spawn in, you'll see the showroom. You can walk back down here and talk to this lady. She seems very invested in her company. Personally, I'm not that impressed. So we're going to be honest with her here. People spend their whole... And I... Whatever you say. Take a look at our catalog and... Are you ready to make your... I just need two parts from you. you Let's get to it. But this is a location where you can get that landing bay if you didn't start with the Razor Leaf. But these are the two parts we're getting here. I'll put them at the front here and they kind of double to me visually as intakes just like we did on the upper uh, but they're also braking engines, so they look really cool when your ship's slowing down. And that's really the build. That's every part and piece. Of course, you may find more usefulness in other parts. The only thing we don't have here is the Vanguard uh, Obliterator Auto Projectors. And again, go do that first mission for the UC. Now the last thing we need to do is get our uh, shielded cargo. We can't just duplicate this one here because at this location they don't sell shielded cargo. 
So if if you've already joined the Crimson Fleet, uh, Jazz sells them there at Crix at the Key. Um, if you haven't, you can go to Porima and go to which planet? Porima Three and go to the Red Mile. And they sell shielded cargo there. Spawn in, find the hatch for this for the main building. It's fairly easy to see, but you may miss it the first time. When you walk in here, you'll see ship services on this desk. I'll go into his office here and talk to Lawn. Why not? So now the first thing we can do, very easy, copy this piece, not delete it, copy it, and put it on the other side over here. Now if you wanted to just stick with that, you can totally do so. The more shielded cargo capacity you have, uh, the less likely it is for the authorities' scans to detect any contraband that you have on your ship. We also need a scan jammer, get the best one. And I like to put it right under here, under the Nova cowling piece. But we have some extra mass to play with here. You can get up to 3789 total mass before you, your mobility begins to drop. Now I'm going to take you to one of my outposts and show you what you have available at your own landing pad with a shipbuilder that you can build at any outpost as long as you have the materials to do so. So here's what it's called. It's literally called landing pad with shipbuilder. And what you need to do is go over to this screen And just like with the ship tech, view and modify ships. Now at your outpost, you won't have the unique modules such as bridges or 2x2 two two or 2x3 two habs, but you will have shielded cargo. Uh, you can't buy scan jammers or other equipment at your outpost either, but you can do shielded cargo. Now I added this extra one in here just because I had the mass to play with and now you'll see I'm going to replace those Deimos engine brakes braking engines with the Stroud version they just fill up the space better personally I like the way they look a little bit better at least on this ship in this location so go to Stroud find the braking engine a little bit cumbersome in the menus Grab these, and you can see they're longer, they fill up the space better, make it look a little more complete. So now, really, all that's left is to give this thing a coat of paint. Now, myself, I enjoy black. Um, my cars are always black, uh, my motorcycles anything else I, I'm just a fan of black I think it looks good it looks good anywhere matches almost anything um, and to me I just I, I enjoy it obviously this is completely an aesthetic choice and totally up to you if you decide to build a ship like this I'd love to see what you go with for your own aesthetic choice for color um, and any other ways that you may have improved on this design and the, at the end of the day, I hope you got some inspiration from this, and that's really the point. Uh, copy it completely if you want. That is on you. Um, and, and honestly, I'd be flattered. So um, now we're going to go to Jemison here. And this is one location where you can get those Vanguard. Uh, particle beam auto projectors. They are available in a lot of locations once you unlock them after the first UC mission. Uh, but this is one spot where you can get them. Sure, how about it? And this is their what they look like. 
These are the stats. And they look lackluster, um, but you can attach six of them to your ship. And so they have the second highest DPS next to the PBO 175 auto beams that we have just underneath of that one. So there's one, two, three on the left side of the ship, and then we have the other three symmetrically opposed on the right side of the ship, as you can see here. Because they're nice and small, you can fit them in tight spaces, so I was surprised when I could fit them on that Deimos, the underside of that Deimos wing, uh, but it hides them really nice, and uh, they really don't disrupt the silhouette of the ship. Now here's a quick look at our final build. All parts attached. Uh, final mass. Now that shield rating is with the crew member named Omari Hassan that I think yeah yeah you get him at Aquila at the bar there uh, but he's got a rank 3 of shield systems and so he dramatically increases the uh, effectiveness of your shields. Now this is also with the Vanguard Warden shield module that I didn't show you initially um, the only difference there, it's got 1450 shield rating versus 1125, but it does also require a max of 12 power to work. Now when you're using the auto projectors, adding power to them doesn't increase their fire rate, it only increases how quickly they recharge their ammo. So for me, I've found that you know, with the auto projectors, you tend to fire a burst at a ship until it has been defeated and then you um, engage in some evasive maneuvers to position yourself for the next round of combat and by that time uh, your weapon should be recharged and um, I feel that it is more useful to have more maximum shields um, so that you are less likely to take hull damage while you're letting your guns recharge so there's the bulwark shield generator and again once you unlock the UC parts these are available in many locations and that's the build so up next we're gonna do an interior walkthrough I'll talk through that a little bit and just kind of call out which hab units we're looking at when we're going through them and after that will be the combat test Let's walk through this big boy. Easy access on the front. Every landing pad you go to, this is the best way to get in and out. Quickest and easiest. So when you enter, you're greeted with the engineering bay, and this is again the Deimos Engineering Bay B, 3x1. The way it's laid out, I think is nice. Go ahead and choose the A variant if you want, or even the Deimos version really any habs that you prefer you can put in here I enjoy the Deimos one myself so that's what I went with and this is the Deimos storage room one by one and we're gonna go up to the main deck this would be the Stroud Eklund all-in-one A two by one unit this connects to the 2x2 two two living quarters by Stroud. Nice open space here. Opens up the ship a little bit, makes it feel a little less tight. A little living space, living room here. And we have the all in one B out on the end. This is in the right wing of the ship. Across the hall here and into the brig and again this doesn't actually function as a brig I wish there were missions where you could capture pirates or whoever needs to be captured and put them in here but um, there's really no actual functional reason for it you could do a mess hall or a cargo hall here 
Uh, this is what I went with. I just I like the layout of it. And we have our infirmary out here in the left wing. Let's head to the front of the ship. We're going to go through our 2x2 two two battle station. And you could go with a 2x1 one, one here if you wanted to with a 2x1 next to it. But again, I like the 2x2 two two, uh, for the larger open space and the big uh, navigation table there. Your crew members will occasionally stand around that as if they are studying battle plans or where to go next um, but I just I really like the feel of this unit there's your main corridor back there this is the computer core to me you know for roleplay purposes seems to make sense that there would be a big server room next to the battle stations as if they are being powered by this uh, computer core room And now we're going to check out the bridge. We'll go in the bottom door. And this one's cool because it's the only bridge that has stairs in it. And I believe the only module that has stairs within your ship. So if you can get away with uh, a single layer of HAB units with no ladder, you could only have stairs in your ship if you you know, can figure out a way to lay it out such that that would be possible. I think that would be very cool. Um, but I decided a ladder would be a good idea as well. Here's our captain's quarters. Makes sense that you would wake up from this bed and go straight to your pilot's seat. And here's our the third floor of our main central ladder all the way down to the docking bay at the bottom don't fall in. Here's the workshop. It's got the main things that you'll need. Industrial workbench, research lab, spacesuit workbench, and a weapons workbench here. And to finish it off, on the very upper deck we've got our armory. Now you could even choose to just put some structural nice elements up here Did you want to discuss just something? to finish off the exterior of the ship. Um, but a two by one is lighter than two mid bracer units. All is well, Captain. All things so considered. Mass was a part of the consideration, as well as just the interior layout and function of the ship. I don't have any weapons applied in here, but the weapons that you, nice you. display Hello, don't count towards your ship's inventory weight. So that is act again. an actual function uh, that you should be aware of. And that's the interior of the ship. best place that I've found to go to test your ship's systems and weapons and really practice ship combat is the Serpentist system. I would recommend you're at a reasonable level to do this, but every time you spawn into a planet, you're going to get one to three Varun that are going to start attacking you. Hang out for about 15 seconds and guaranteed they will show up. While we wait for this craft drive to spool, I'm going to go over a few more things with you guys. Number one is going to be our skills. And so you know, I'm going to show you. I've got rank four of Anutronic Fusion, five extra units of power that you can allot into your systems. Very important. I've got rank four of piloting to allow me to fly the Class C ships. I've got rank four of shield systems. And I don't think these are reflected in this ship stats page say that five times fast. Rank 4 of engine systems. 
rank 4 particle beam weapon systems and rank 4 starship design you just need this for certain modules that we used that require that rank and I forgot to show you the stats page see we've got 46 in the reactor 10 crew now this is showing us our stats with the um, what was the shield I'm gonna mouse over it real quick there's the obliterators exterminators your sal engines warden SG 400 so this is the one before I chose to change to the Vanguard and the grav drive. So with this warden shield you and with Omari Hassan you get 2700 shield rating and you only need 10 power in it to ma to power it max. So I just wanted to call that out. Let's get into the combat. uncut just to show you that each and every time you travel to one of these planets in the Serpentis system you get a Varun spawn just like clockwork here they come Here, this ship, next ship, actually this one too, starts boosting. So I have to manual aim. As soon as you get that lock, even if you're over 3,000 meters, with these particle beams just start firing away. They have incredible range and equal damage to shield and hull. 
very powerful weapons. And just so you can see, I'm, uh, I've been on very hard this whole time. None of this clip is cut. This is all raw footage here. combat is also an excellent way to earn XP and level up in a very fun way. Now you can exploit the outpost and that can also make you a reasonable amount of credits, but in my opinion there is no more fun way to earn XP than doing this. Now don't forget, I didn't do it in this clip, but loot all those crates that the ships drop. Oftentimes there will be credits in them, um, and definitely some valuable resources that you'll need for weapons and spacesuit upgrades and research projects and things of that nature. I'm going to quickly land on this moon and do a fly around of the ship. One last time. So you guys can get a final look. very happy with the way this came out. I really hope this inspires you to build your own. And again, feel free to copy this ship verbatim if you wish. I'd love to see others using this design. Um, that would make me feel very flattered. And the scale of the ship is a little bit deceptive. Kind of how small we are inside of the bridge there. And that's the Basilisk, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you enjoyed, give me a like and a subscribe. And if I've got enough interest, I'm going to keep making videos. I am already coming up with my next ship build and what to do, how to set it up. It will be very different than this one. And uh, I hope you guys are around for more of this content. I play other games as well, so I'd love to keep making videos. Cheers. Have a great day.